Hello, this is Rebirth of Legend here with another replay analysis. Are you looking at a juggernaut? Um, I'm looking at a juggernaut. He wants to know what he can do to increase his farm overall. Um, so this game in particular, we'll just go back to this real quick. You'll see he's a juggernaut. He gets less than five creeps a minute with a battle fury SNLI blink. So we'll try and talk a little about the itemization and focus on some farming patterns throughout the game. Let's speed it up. <coughs> so we pick it into. No, it's just an all off the game, it's not ranked. Good god, my computer's freaking out. Okay, no more exit. The new new Dota update or something must have screwed with like graphic settings because my computer's been like struggling, like loading into games and like random other stuff. Not very fun. Sorry, man, that's okay. I'd rather replace that with like, like you could start eight. Ten, I don't think you need a sal. Like if the thing is, you can always level your healing ward. It's gonna heal. It's gonna heal. Oh, right. now it's on, baby. Almost oh, the oh, amount of the sal oh, at the oh cost God. of some mana. So instead of having a mango, you can just open like stout uh, mangoes. Or sorry, stout uh, clarity. Uh, a tango. Usually my start on a lot of melee cores is stout ringer protection. Uh, a tango. So it's a deal with harass really well. Built into the Aquila you usually want. Or sorry, not the Aquila, the um, Basilus. Um, I know you have no. I don't know if you're. you're you are right next to her. Luke explains so you might be in a party with her. Honestly. You should just send her to the jungle. This man's an excellent jungler with her frostbite. She instantly kills pretty much any jungle creep with frostbite. So, she sh if, she, if this person likes playing Kosmite and you know them, tell them to just go jungle. And if they don't know how to, then they need to look it up. Because it's really easy. Like, you just attack a creep like you're trying to stack a camp. I uh, will just... Alrighty, this won't work. Learn in every video I do. Oh, that's a lie. I thought it I thought it went to 200, so I assumed 50 per level. Starts off pretty high, it's like 120. Problem is you need mana for your spin, so you can go on people. You have a mango, so it's not the end of the world, but um, what I was going to say is you attack this creep, you pull it up to here, and then when the creep is right here and it's about to turn, you frostbite it. That way you're not fighting the whole camp at once. Um, so if you know your crystal, if you know the crystal man, or if you ever played it here, that's useful to know. You aggro the camp, you pull it, you, you frostbite the creep when it's far away from the camp, and you fight one creep at a time. Uh, because ideally, how you want to play this is you get some levels and then you kill people with uh, frostbite into spin or her Q into spin. You could do really well. She's just pulling normally. I mean, like, you're not really gonna struggle against this lane to, like, creep. Blood has been spilled, you know, Forty, for so the first time up? in this game. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, when it finishes defrosting. Yeah, it's defrosting. I'm gonna cook after that. Yes. Uh, I don't know. As soon as that turkey's defrosted, I'm gonna cook it. I don't know how long it'll take. It was frozen. Been defrosting for like an hour or an hour and a half, I'd say. Alright. Well, that was fun. Sorry. Oh, shit. I, I missed what Eric got on here. You have to kind of like try and anticipate things like this, which can be kind of hard. But the, the, like, the Earth Shaker has like a pretty predictable animation, so if you see that coming, you can dodge it. I think that isn't real. Spin. Okay. Like, you see him casting the totem, so you spin that, and you dodge the totem. So like here, okay, for starters, that's not real. Um, you should know, like, going up to this, you're going to take a lot of damage trying to do this. So it might not even be worth it. What you do is instead of walking up to the creep, you attack one of them, which will aggro the creeps within 500 range, which should actually be all the melee creeps from where you are. You just walk backwards. This will alleviate the pressure from your tower and pull the creeps towards you and make them have to go farther to here to actually harass you. So, I think this is like your second wasted spin. 
I think you would have just made it out of there, honestly. Like, it would have been fine to, fine to spin the fitter, but you didn't. I know you say you get a 17 minute battle period. If you could, like, phase first and you're doing some fighting and you don't have, like, reasonable free farm, that's kind of okay. Well, what I think we're really gonna look at is, like, during the mid game. During the mid game, that's where I really expect to see like the difference. Like particularly, you said like in bot games, you can get like eight to ten creeps a minute on a jug, which is pretty reasonable in a real game. And like twelve on an AM. Uh, so pretty... Okay, you didn't move. You didn't move. I don't think that was probably the have boots. There's no Level reason you should have gotten away from you. The kill was kind of dragged out, but you got them both anyway. Get the little stats here, that's pretty good. I mean, I, I usually get a few levels of stats. I'll leave my crit at one for a while or something. I think levels of stats are good. Jug has this awkward feeling where, like, you feel really Radiant squishy because you have, like, a low strength attack. gain. Particularly if you go for the Battle Fury. Like, you don't, you don't feel like you actually have, like, a lot of HP. Which can feel, like, really awkward when you're trying to, like, go on people and man up. And it's like, oh, I'm at 1500 HP. I'm, like, level 20. Yeah, you can spin to purge it off. You can't manta to purge it off. One of the comments I left was something like, uh, make sure you consider manta. I know you said something Radiant's about getting metal an SMR. Under attack. Uh, see, you see, one thing you can be doing too uh, is you can just jungle. Like, if you attack. ever don't feel safe to be in your lane, like, this goes on any hero who can, like, reasonably jungle, but just almost any single carry, as long as you have, like, a stout shield or some mechanic to, like, kill the creeps fast and efficiently. Like, if you ever feel like you can't walk into lane, which isn't this moment, but just made me think, because you were standing near the tower when the creep wave was, like, right here. Just walk and kill the easy cam. Like, that's all you gotta do. Just don't waste time. Like, you can't sit at the tower and do nothing as a carry. It's stupid. You blew your last hit there. You just had a wave. Radiant's um, middle tower is under attack! On. I think you missed that. So, okay, this is super easy to do. You have phase boots. The tower hits a melee five times, and you right-click it. This will get you a hundred. This will hundred percent get you a creep because of how high your damage is, along with a quelling blade. Five hits from the tower at this point in the game. If, like creeps get stronger over time. In the first ten minutes, this will be like pretty much universally true. If you have like, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll say the numbers too. If you do sixty-five damage, then th there's like a good chance sixty-five or more damage. If five hits come from the tower, the tower has a variable damage as well. But if five hits come from the tower in a melee and you attack it, you'll kill it. Uh, it's two hits to a range creep, but you have to have 80 damage. So right now you're sitting at about 88 damage and you have a quelling blade, which is 30% on, or sorry, it's 40. So it's like another 20 damage. So to creeps, you're doing like, uh, probably like 105 damage. So it's super easy to creep right now. So you can't be missing free creeps like that. It'll put back all your other itemizations. Like that's something you have to get used to because I know you say you do good in bot games, bots don't exert pressure. So it can inflate how you feel things go. Like in a bot game, it's not hard for me to get like 15 to like 20 creeps a minute on a hero that farms decently. I think I got like 16 on like a Spectre. It's just like a hero that doesn't really farm fast when I was testing out um, the new Desolate. I like how you walk that time and don't, don't waste the spin. See, what I would do is on your next level, nah, it's kind of awkward because you got the stat point. It might be worth having the healing ward so you don't have to go back to base. This is also where a Bassy would be nice. A uh, wand would also be okay because he's kind of spamming. Middle tower is under like, he's thrown out that a few times. He's going to constantly be using his Q. Two. Two. I think it's a Q, right? Ah. Okay, you move that. He doesn't fall on yeah, He's using his Blood Rage constantly to, to farm. Which means you get free wand charges. So having a wand here would be really good. Radiant's bottom tower is and under uh, you can even go like 4 one, one And you don't necessarily need the level and stats. I mean, that's something I think about. Like if you think you'll want the healing ward, you should probably just have Radiant's level. middle tower is under But like here, like, let's go back to this. Do you got like, is it a tornado or a cold snap? I don't know. Like you, there was no reason oh, to Radiant's like, middle tower spin is under attack. Yeah, he tornadoes you and you spin, but, like, you'll see the EMP if he's doing it. Like, if he's doing an EMP tornado, or tornado EMP combo, like, you'll see the EMP, and then you spin. But you'll have time. It takes a long time for this combo to line up. Because you see how it's a lift time changes right here? It's .8, all the way up to 2.9, I think. 
Oh, he changed spells. So I'm looking at the wrong thing. I think it's set up to 2.9. The MP cast time is something like 2.9, like it coincides exactly with the duration. So if he does one after the other, when he's at a higher level, you'll get hit. But you have plenty of time to react when that's a lower level. And like, you'll see it go down, so you'll know if you have the instant spin. So you see him should be trying to help set up more kills for you there. Nice. So you got another kill there. Good. So you're only laning phase with 30 creeps right now. I wouldn't say your lane's really that hard. You probably get left with like 50 or 60 if you play a little better. Like I said, you miss a lot of creeps under tower. You need to learn to aggro creeps. I've explained it in a bunch of other videos. I think I have another couple of jug videos. I'm sure it's mentioned in one of those. You can all look at them. I have a ton of anti made videos if you like playing that era. Um, I talk about aggro creeps a lot. Man, because Am's not... Oh boy, Dyer's middle tower he's like... He, he's a... He can be a strong laner, but he's not inherently a strong laner. It's kind of weird. Like, with yeah, other stuns, it's good. But, like, attack. Jug is, like, straight up strong. Like, this spin does, like, 700 damage or something right now. At this level. That's a lot of damage. So you can get kills, you just have to be set up for it. See, like, I, I would like to see a lot of here. You don't need a Morbid Mask. Just like, if you just had a Bassie, you'd be fine, too. Like, you diverted for a Morbid Mask, I'm assuming for, like, a form of regen, but, like, that's putting off your Battle Fury, and, like, a Ring of Health's gonna give you comparable sustain, too. Like, you can jungle this with a Ring of Health, a Ring of Health on a 4-man shield, you're gonna kill this and not lose that much HP. Like, when you're going from here to the, to the creep, like, you're gonna lose some HP here, and then once you're creeping the lane, you're gonna gain a lot of it back. So this is good. You can get some more levels of stats here if you want to farm. Uh, usually you want at least like two or three levels of more. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. It's like two percent. That's gonna heal you like heal like fifty percent aggregate HP. Oh, Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And then three is gonna heal seventy five percent, which would be like, usually like at the end of a fight, you might be at like ten percent, twenty five percent HP. Oh, so fifty oh, mana for you. So oh, oh, seventy five will get you. Gonna get something over stats. So yeah, this Morbid Mask was a, was a waste of money. You just pushed off your Battle Fury by probably like Radiant's a bottom tower is under attack. Couldn't do much about Radiant's Toast bottom tower, Malone, could you? Dog. Oh my god. You said you get an Aquila after your Battle Fury too. This is... I was looking for a compliment there, but I think we just lost it. Do you want to be like a fish in the dominating. <laughs> Um, you walk to the side shop to buy this when you had full mana, just use the courier, who cares? Or get it when you're when it's more convenient, like you could have killed that camp and gotten over there faster. And then back to the way of, If your team is fighting down there and you see action, you should be pushing this creep way harder. It's even nicer now that there's this hard camp, because you can go from here to the hard camp. Uh, right there is a Lycan in lane. Uh, you checked his items is really quick. You could bother to show the Lycan, honestly, if you want it. You just like go over and you spin on him, make him ult or something, like waste his mana. I want to stress that I think a Bassy is like 100% mandatory at any safe lane carry. Like I don't care what carry it is, like it can be an core, it can be a uh, strength core, it can be an agi core. Like getting the Bassy at a minimum and then turning into either a Vlad's or a Quilla can be good. Or even just leaving the Bassy's fine, because it lets you push harder. Because the active puts two armor on your creeps, and the, the mana helps, particularly someone like Juggernaut. Who, like, your healing ward is gonna help you jump a little faster, he's gonna help you jump a little faster, and, like, the Aquilas, or sorry, the Bass here, the Aquilas, gonna give you that extra mana you need, since you're not being poor. It's really important. Like, here, like, our farm isn't accelerating that much. There's three people dead, so this is. It's not wrong. You can just spin and kill those. I would just spin and kill those as fast as possible and get out of here. You're kind of wasting a lot of time here. Like, it's good to push this, but like, their whole team's up now. They're gonna deal with oh, you. Oh man, what? Get up on out of here, cause Radiant here, just fortified their structure. You waited too long. Yeah. Okay. So, we're gonna talk about this. This was a mistake. There are a few mistakes here. So, I'm not saying it's wrong to push here. It's also right pass. It would help because your creeps will last longer and you won't take the tower like as much as you did. I do this a lot too, actually, and I've died way too many times. I totally shouldn't do this. I'll tank the tower for my creeps so there's more creeps alive to attack oh, the tower. Plus, I want like attack. an anti mage or an anti mage with the plaids because then I can heal myself up and just jump into the next camp. But like sometimes you'll barely die and it'll be because you decided oh, to tank all these tower shots. You should de aggro this right now. You see the next creep wave coming. 
you spin and kill this and walk away right now. Because, like, your team's backing right here, which means they're probably going to respond to you up here because you're pushed up super far. Um. <clears throat> so you see... You see the Earth Shaker. You spin TP. You spin TP immediately. You spin TP here, you don't die. You wait, he times that, and kills you. That's just really, sh that is just really lazy, you know? Or, not lazy, that's like really just poor play. Like, we, wait, you lived here? What the fuck? Am I crazy? I, okay, I guess he died. Oh, no, there you go. Um, so you gotta kill there, so that like, could've been worse. You killed the Earth Shaker. But like, your life's not oh, man, worth the Earth Shaker's dominating. life. You made the sand to die. And now the drow. Like, if you weren't there to die, these three deaths would not have happened. They traded uh, a one position, another carry, and a support for, uh, I guess a support in a, in a core. So you guys, are, look how much farm you, you are ahead. Like, if you were farming faster, and like knowing when to go back, so, oh sorry, so what I was gonna say there is, you were pushing that tower when your team took a fight and pushed this. Like, that's okay to do, but it's like 20 minutes in. Like, you're not gonna kill that super fast. Or it's, I guess it was 15 minutes at that point. You're not going to kill this super quickly. You should be focusing on optimizing your farm. So you can go back to this camp, farm that, walk through here, farm this, farm this, farm this, walk back to here, get back to the creep wave. Because when you push it all the way to this tower, the next creep wave is going to meet very close to the tower. Which means that when the towers are getting auto attacks on your creep wave, it's going to push back. And that means that if you went back, farmed here, farmed there, loop back this way, You'd meet this creep wave again right back here, and then you repeat the process. <sighs> it's kind of awkward to do this. I think maybe more like to hard camp, medium, and then back. Like those are little things you want to think about, like which camp you farm quicker, and you do that based off the timer, really. Like if you have time to get to these camps, then you want to go from here to there to there to there, because that that's more like in your route. Well, if you go here to here, and then all the way back to here kind of inefficient because you're like going there and then back as opposed to just one one motion i suppose it's not really clear on the mini map i'll try and unpause and, and explain it so like let's say it's like 20 seconds and you're getting here you have enough time to farm this camp this camp this camp and these two so you'd go from the medium go camp to the hard chest. camp back to this camp so you skip over it at first and usually you'd be able to crawling through this tree to here to here to here and then back to here and you should arrive here at about the respawn for those camps and then you start the cycle again like you push this creep wave farm this camp farm that camp and then do it again but if you're at like if you're at like 45 seconds 50 seconds on the spawn timer and you kill this camp and there's like 50 seconds left just run to the quickest camp and either stack or kill it um and then get out of the way so it respawns, and then just prepare oh, to do it Radiant's again. Bottom tower or is under spawn attack. everything, or sorry, farm it all again, and then you just do it normally. So like, let's say you went from here to here, then you would just go from, sorry, you go here, you stack this, farm this, then uh -huh. go here, there, and then back. So those are like little efficient patterns you want to have memorized. And it's something you can just think about in games, like you'll always want to be looking at the clock and figuring out based off creep spawns, when's, gonna, when's it going to be optimal. Okay, this is not a 17 minute battle here. Oh, radiant top tower is under 20. attack! Oh man! I'm assuming that's coming on the courier. It's another thing, you could have finished that right here. But, it's fine to have it delivered too, because that means you get to farm that camp now instead. So you can walk here and pick that up and farm the camp. Or just have the courier deliver it. And you also need the speed boost. The speed boost is up, just use it. The only time you want to reserve speed boost is when you're bottle growing. And when you're bottle growing, um, an empty bottle just slows down your courier, but the speed boost doesn't get slowed at all. So you always want to want to use the boost when sending the bottle back on its It's really important to know if you play someone like an alchemist or any other hero that needs to bottle grow a lot. But in your case, you just want to get the IMT as fast as possible. So just make sure you use that speed boost. You see the jungle's farmed out, so you walk back to land. This is good. Like, just keep in mind, you're invincible. If you have a TP, it's like, this is like no point in going back for it. Like, you just have too many indecisive items. I'd rather you have a wand than a morbid mask, because you don't need the morbid mask, as we discussed. You also haven't really been fighting as much as I thought. You were really just trying to farm. And like, you're, you're super head on farm. If we look at this, your team is crushing it. And you're at half 
the creeps you're gonna have for the rest of the game at 20 minutes. But like here, like your your farmer should be on a constant increase in the amount you're getting per Don't minute. Know. Like on anti mage before I have battle fury, I'm probably attack. close to like oh, 10, 12 minutes. Um, pre battle fury, I can get that many in a single minute, averaging over like five, ten minutes or something. So when I have the battle fury and I'm attack. focusing on farming, it's over 20. It's like 20, uh, 25. Tower, but you're not attack. focusing on farming all the time. Sometimes you're purposely trying, you're purposely being less farm efficient to to fight more. So like here. You're just kind of standing around. Like right now, you should be farming that camp, farming this camp, and like preparing for the fight. Because those are two camps that you can farm out right there, all waiting. Your team's not trying to do anything urgent. You're not really necessary for it. Like you're trying to force something here. And like in your case, why aren't you? You could just farm out these two camps. You could have farmed them out again now. There's just nothing happening right now. Huh, that's interesting. Whoa, I thought that was pretty oh, oh, no. man. See, this was bad. Your team just lingered here for so long. And like, this is something you have to like, try and proactively call. So like, you're here, when you get X'd, I think that shows that there must be a ward viewing you, right? This is not. I think he just caught an eye on you for a second. See, I thought that would hurt the spin, but it didn't. Oh boy, killing spree. Oh, so you guys sat there for kill. so fucking long, that... Huh, that's a pretty quick bling dagger on his part. This is stupid though. You want your aftershock max. Um, you get a kill, go right into the spin. That's good. If you TP right out here, you're golden. You might still be golden. Yeah, you're still good. But right now, okay, your team lost this fight and you're gonna lose this tower. You have to go back to farming and split pushing. Um, yeah, you're farming the woods. Like, you want to prioritize split pushing over it. So I think you were already over here. You could have walked like this and started Double pushing above oh, You tower. need to draw their attention away from the objective. Or, like, force trades to some degree. Like, all their lanes are pushed in right now. Tires middle you can be farming all that attack. out. Like, you guys are still at a pretty big advantage, right? See, like, that's throws right there. That's like, you know, guys not Dyer's being careful tower. and throwing away a lead. It's gone. That's why Spectre wins Whoa, games, because teams just throw away leads like that. Under attack. Your LSG net worths. You guys have. Eh, it doesn't look as bad as, you, as I thought it would. Actually, yeah, it is, because you got like four people in like the top six who are like way ahead of like the people down here. It's a pretty good lead, though. I mean, it was definitely better when it was twice the amount it is now. But like, you see how bad that is, just like getting out of position without one fight. And you spent all that time not creeping, like I said. You could farm these two camps twice while waiting for a fight to break out, but like, you guys were also f trying to force a fight without Aegis. Like, what's the point? You have a fucking troll. You have a troll, and you have a jug. <coughs> Sorry. You have a troll, and you have a juggernaut. Why don't you just do this? Like, once again, this Mortar Mask is uh, Like, you have PM Ward, and you have a Battle Fury regen. You also ditched your poor man's shield for no reason. Not my problem. It's really good the against her, so you shouldn't shall. do that. It's good against his wolves. He doesn't know what he's doing for a skill build. Um, see, like, imagine if you guys did this before. I think he's about to feed this away, maybe. Yeah, you know. Nice. Got all 11, so that works. When you, uh, when you bolt, you actually get auto attacks off. Oh, shit. Oh, my God! Four, oh, that's four in a row! That's easy! He's now dominating! He's dominating! You can examine this whole chain of events and just talk about how stupid it is. You just TP out here. I mean, you need to get used to spin TP. Like, that's such a strength of your hero. Okay, you're gonna die. Yeah, he's giant. Weirdo. Um, so that's not worth it. It's never really worth it for you to die. Like, as a carry, your main job in life is to survive. Um, like, you not dying is, like, your biggest responsibility, which is what makes playing a carry so hard. This is, didn't used to always be as true, but with the comeback mechanics, it's worse. Like, look how bad you guys threw this lead. And that was because you threw a fight here, lost a tower, which was a 6k gold swing. You went from like 12 to this. And then you're like, oh, we should probably Roshan. And then you go and Rosh, and then they steal the Roshan from you and kill three people on your team. That is, this is a complete turnaround over the course of like five minutes. And it's stupid. And that whole time you spent not farming. You're down to five groups a minute. I think you were at like 120 at... 20 minutes? You're at like 133, 
26 minutes. And you only died one time in that duration, which just means you were running around like a chicken without its head on. So like, I, I posted a comment too, and what I said was, like, you have to get used to fighting and farming. Like, if you want to group up, it doesn't mean you don't hit creeps. It just means you're changing where you're hitting creeps. So if I want to optimally farm, I farm my woods, and probably mid lane and like top lane or something. Like, you're gonna be farming, can I draw? I can't draw. You're gonna be farming like this area. That's your optimum farm. And then when you're when you're doing something more aggressive, like 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 um, if you feel you can play aggressive and give that space to your team, then you farm out these camps. You see how it's a much more defensive farming out, there's less camps. You'll still get lots of farm when you're taking it from your enemy. And like if you're just pushing, then you have this camp that's close, that camp that's close, that camp that's close. Like you're gonna pass by all the walls you're trying to push. Under you're going attack. here, you have these camps, you're going here, you got that camp, that camp, that camp. That are all accessible on your way to Dyer's pushing an objective, which is super important. So, like, like I was talking about, you guys grouped here without the ages. So why are you trying to force something? You were heavily out farming them, Dyer's middle like tower by so much. Attack. And now, like all those creeps you guys hit, just got transferred into their advantage. So, like, if you want to be a farming-centric carry, which is totally fine, like, that's how I play. And super, super attack. farm intensive. Dyer's middle um, tower just took a you big can't feed beating. because then you're feeding Gone. away your gold advantage that you gained to the enemy. Like that's the point, like farming oriented play is super safe play, super consistent play. Where it's like if I just farm, get my items, and don't die, we'll win the game. And it's true in a lot of situations, but like that last part, the not dying, is what's really important. Let's go back to see what you're doing here. So you push this lane to here, you see how you forced the earth shaker to respond, or you forced someone to respond? That's super good. Like, when you force them to respond, and you have a TP up, that means your team can fight an advantage. Because you can TP in, and it's a 5 on 4 when they're trying to do aggressive stuff. So right now, you guys have... They're trying to push here, but the Earthshaker's out there. The Earthshaker just TP'd to respond to you. So where is he now? He's going back to base. Let's start working on an axe. It amazes me that no one buys wards at lower level games. They're so good. But it's not hard to even get him in high-level games. Oh, we got one more. We got one more. I don't think we have any others though. Yeah, that's all we have. It's just that one word. Props to your Mr. Man. Just crushing it. There are game boots. But yeah, like your team could have taken this fight here, and you come up the rear, and then you um. Oh, sorry, you you come up the rear like this. Since you didn't have a TP up, uh, I can't draw because I'm in player perspective. But like you come up like this as they push the fight, because you know the Earthshaker was not there, and he's their huge form of initiation. He's what won them this fight, and what won them. He got the two kills here, and then came here and got a blink echo and killed more people. Every coin helps. Like that's why he's got a blink dagger. He's got a ton of deaths, but it, like the kills he got were just so key. It just made all the difference this game. Let's see what we're at now. 148. 30 minutes, so you've increased your farm by 25 creeps in another mm, three and a half to four minutes. That's still bad, you're still at 10 creeps a minute, like in terms of the per minute. So, that's another thing I wanted to talk about is your item Dyer's choice. So, like, once again, I said this morbid mask was stupid, a wand would serve you better and it would be cheaper. Um, you're getting a Sanjin Yasha. You can get a Manta, and what a Manta's gonna let you do is, on the off chance you get silenced by him, you can purge it. If she tries to blink Shackle, or throws out a Shackle, you can dodge the Shackle with a Manta. It used to not be avoidable, but now it is. So anytime the Shackle, she's like projecting the Shackle, like as soon as she casts it, you can dodge her. While well, it used to require like really specific timing. But now it's just like, oh, she threw a Shackle, oh, Manta dodge her. Under attack. Um, it doesn't help too much for the Invoker, you can't purge Bolt Snap. But you can purge like the meatball burn. And like you can't purge Cold Snap, but you can stop them from hitting you. Because it'll it'll break who they're attacking, so you can get like a reprieve and run away a little more. So it, it's like okay against Cold Snap, but just won't purge it. Uh those little rascals. So I wanna look at like specifically like, where you're moving, like what you're doing. A lot of walking. Okay, this is where I was talking about before, where you can like run up. Your team needs to like jump out at them, but you guys don't have good initiation. Just throw a boat and hope. Should go to the ancients here. But we 
don't. See, this is a waste too. Like, you have a TP, there's no reason to be walking back here. You farm these ancients, you go back into their woods, and you start pushing this wave again. Like, if you know they're still posturing here, then you start pushing again. Like, an Earthshaker's not really that scary. Just if he gets the jump on you. But if you know he's there, it's good for your team, because that means if you, you know he's trying to jump you, then he can't jump your team. And, like, if you just push the creep wave to heal and you don't sit at the tower, and you just go back to jungling. Someone's gonna have to show to push the creep wave, or you just keep rinsing and repeating. Uh, it's gonna be a little predictable, attack. but. And they might use that to try and kill you, but it's just something you have to be like aware of. And try and like mind fuck them over it. Radiant's so yeah, mindless SMLs are really stupid. Oh, Radiant's yeah, yeah. Metal Tower is under attack! Dude, let's go back, like what are we even doing? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh. So over the course of like a minute, uh, you ran over here, attack. you pushed to here. Ran all the way back over here without jungle land camp. Farm this hard camp. Ran all the way up here. Circled around. Came back here. Farm one three wave. Picked up a bounty. Now. And you're back in your woods. It's going to be nice. Oh, Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Healing ward. God, that was so close. Bold on his part. Kind of stupid. Uh, Dyer's bottom tower is under Should've attack. Should've assumed your team is nearby. And you were spinning, so he's gonna take damage uh, anyway. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Close. And if he, um, if he killed himself, he was totally screwed. Yeah, there was a very low probability of him coming away, and he went for it. So, like, here, what are we doing? We're running back and forth again. Where are you going? I'm so curious. So let me put it this way, like one of the strengths of like you is you can Blade Fury and TP and against many lineups they can't do anything. Unless they have like a Bane or someone with a BKB piercing stun. They can't do anything. So like don't be so scared to farm. Just have your finger on your Q, like on your Blade Fury, and then as soon as you see someone you just use it and you TP. And they can't stop you. They have nothing to stop you. That doesn't go through BKB. They need a. Okay, that does. That does go through BKB. Only Bashers and Abyssal Abyssal will stun through BKB for an item. And. That's really it. Um, and besides that, the new hero, like a Pudge. Pudge is fucking annoying. He's away. Just farm. He, he, he's, he's clear. Just go back. Like, this is such low probability shit. Attack. This is so much time being wasted. So, like I said. Uh, over here, you like ran over to here and then ran back away. So now this wave is like pushed again. Ooh, like, you kind of won this fight, so pushing here is okay to do. Oh, like, you missed out on a huge farm opportunity. Because it was just really bad. That's gotta be a bug. You can't possibly have a TB up right now. Oh jeez, Morty, they're going after Dyer's bottom tower. So you're gonna go here and push this out. You could farm out their whole woods. Oh, uh, Dyer's with bottom tower is under attack. But you don't. You like farm this out and then run all the way back to. Ba okay, that's what it was. You like ran back to base for like no reason, which was just really. Sad. I couldn't remember what it was, but yeah, like here you could farm that camp pretty safely. You could farm that. Like I know you don't have vision here, which is kind of annoying. Like even if you like even if you want, you could just. Buy ops. Like, if it's gonna let you farm safer and farm more aggressively, a hundred and fifty dollar investment for two wards is gonna do you wonders. Like, you put up two wards, you can save the slip push. Like, who cares if your CM's a fucking idiot? Get a fight breaks out. Like, you shouldn't be grouping these like so. I know you're close to having enough. Whoa! But it was start enough. killing this person mode. triple kill because they got a triple kill. So now they. Like, the invoker's probably gone, like, he can ghost walk, and Radiant's I'm sure your skin doesn't have attack. attack. Oh my god, she does. Uh, Whatever. So she has attack. 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 But like, he, he grouping here is fine, you can take this objective and approach, which is probably a little safer. As long as you don't overstay your welcome there, you're fine. I say your welcome is right about when the shaker's gonna be up. Because if he TPs and it echoes, he goes, Oh, Dyer's bottom tower's under attack. Oh great! What a joke. Cool. Tower so like here, you, can TP, you should TP top uh, right now. Top Get this attack. pushed and tell your troll to just go on. This is good. Like you're so far behind in farm. You had it's been like 15 minutes since um, you were at 120 creeps at like 20 minutes or so. 
and you've only gained 50, 60 creeps in 15 minutes. So like this is where your firm's falling off, and it's because you're just making poor decisions. Like you keep, you need to farm out as many cans as possible, and you're pushing and like make smart movements. And like, why are you back in fountain? What? The okay, so the reason you buy a blink dagger is to jump certain people. I'm not dismissing it as being good here. Uh, it's probably okay. You could jump the Earthshaker if you think he's a problem. But like, that's the only person you really want to jump. But like, once again, that's why you have a courier. Like, this wave is pushed so far, and you could farm it, push it all the way to here and farm out your woods, and you're not doing it. Instead, you're running back to get your items when you guys have a courier sitting idly in the base. It's just stupid. It's like really stupid. <clears throat> Get a blink. Oh, okay, maybe that's why that Kunkka is on your team. I saw him before and I was really confused by it. I like how you are getting some of the stats. I think you could have held back on more levels. It's not bad. But you're gonna, like, not level things. How did this fight even go down? Holy shit. Okay, you guys start with your troll dying. This is where you back the fuck up. Your troll just died. He's one of your carries. Is he one of the richer people in the game? I don't know. No worth. Nah, he's okay. Well. So you open up on her. The thing is, she dodges like half your damage. When she's wind running, your right clicks don't hit her. So that's not kill. Oh, man. You just let her. You had the kill there, too. And she does a ton of damage with that maelstrom when you're really shit's not up. Like, you had the kill on her, but you walked away. Spin. You see her there. You run at her. And you cancel an auto attack and then walk away. Like, what is this guy? That's just poor play. That's where you guys pretty much just. Ah, once you lost the game. But they're probably gonna take one, maybe two racks off that, right? I would think. Like this Dom's at least the right now. Like you also it's gonna let you dish out more damage or attack faster. But Dom's like plus five armor. Like they have good magic nukes. The reason you got it is because you bought the Morver mask, but that's like compounding on a problem that we stated already. You can use it to stack ancients for yourself too. Which would have been a good early investment. Their team does not do ancients well, so you could have used that to stack ancients to like Sell yourself further into the mid game, or into the mid to the late game, but you didn't do that. Um, so let's see. Oh, 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 hold back. That's probably smart. Uh, those little rascals are hitting Dyer's bottom. Yeah, you guys are power. having, like, you guys farm so well early and then just, like, chose not to take the rest of the game. Like, remember when I looked at this? And it was like three of you would like triple their creeps below you. And now this guy like caught oh, up. Let me tell you this, Rokia. Oh, 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 he's now dominating. So you want to fight the rush pit? He's dominating. Radiant spot. Radiant is powered by their structure. Oh, Radiant no power. Way to go. Radiant spot. The power is completely gone. Do you lose this game? Oh, you guys win. Okay. So we're gonna do a quick little recap because I have to go make dinner. That's what that lovely conversation in the very beginning was about. Um, so we'll point out a couple of things. One, you need to work on your laning mechanics. Like I said, I have a few other videos where I talk about it. I've beaten this to death and other things. I don't feel like repeating it. You can look up controlling creep aggro. That's what it is. Um, just learn it. It'll help you in many, many lanes. You waste a lot of spins in your laning phase. So like you need to practice like the lane control and the last hit. You missed a ton of creeps under tower in like eight minutes when you have like eight minutes of the lane. Jug's probably one of the easiest heroes to creep with, particularly at that point when you have all that damage. There's no reason to throw that. 
normal practice, like, can, I, I'd say communicating, I can't blame this on you, um, cause it's probably your CM that's bad, but you need to, like, communicate with her and have her use her spells correctly, if you can, and if they don't communicate, then you react to that and you just focus on your uh, power um, and playing smart. You can use your Blade Fury to harass and not get kills if the CM's not communicating properly. Oh, you had Arcane Aura too, I forgot about that. It's still good to have the Bassy with the Arcane Aura because um, top tower is under attack. it's more regen. And like I said, the reason you get a Bassy is for the, the armor aura in the mid game, which lets you split push even harder. Um, why are they reporting the Invoker? What did he do? Poor little bugger. Almost got his shields. Um, but like specifically your question was about creeping. And um, in the early game, what you want to do is and I'm honestly early game, I mean like when you're creeping from like seven minutes to probably close to 20, but 20 depending on the game, it's somewhere between like 15 and 20 minutes. Uh, like when you're just trying to maximize farm on heroes, you push the creep wave here, and then you farm these woods. Like you auto attack your creep wave and then farm these woods. Which means you're feeding the offlaner creeps if they're sitting around, but like you're getting two more camps, maybe even three. If you're radiant, because you can get that one too. You're getting two to three more camps out of it, and you're excelling yourself, assuming that they're actually last hitting correctly too. And like some offlaners, like I don't know, like Clock or Timber, might have trouble getting those last hits because their right clicks are awkward, and if they're low on mana too. Clock is under attack. I was just spitballing for names. I mean, a lot of offlaners aren't used to needing to last hit with their offlane heroes, uh, as opposed to safe laners attack. who are like, okay, my job is to creep, and offlaners like, my job is to get experience, so they don't necessarily have the as good last hitting fundamentals. Um, lastly, like like I said, I, I summed up in this post, the post I wrote, and it was before I even watched this replay at all, and it was what I assumed would happen. Anytime you grouped up and tried to do something, particularly when it was stupid, like you guys almost threw this game with that mid fight, where you threw like a... 12k gold lead and you brought it down to like 6k and then you lost the Roshan fight which cost you the next 6k. Um, you weren't farming in between like what you were doing. Like you could have farmed these two camps out twice as a team or by yourself, whatever. Like you have a battle fury, it's only like 8 seconds to walk there, farm it and get back. And like nothing urgent was happening. Uh, and then there was a bunch of times you walked back to base for like no reason. And there was a time you could have pushed this out, farmed these two camps pretty safely. And then used your Q to like magic immune TP out in the meantime if you needed to. Um, and you do that like at least two times. Uh, I do watch replays on accelerator rates, so it's, I probably missed like a bunch of other inefficient things, but these are things you just have to think about. Once you have the right mindset, everything else will kind of come naturally. Uh, you did it again top lane, your creep wave is pushed to here, you TP, and I was like, oh, good job. And then you pushed it to here and then walk back to base like you're a juggernaut you need to be pushing out these waves super hard and you use your qtp you use your your blade fury tp to do it safely like if you ever need to you can blade fury tp and this team has no recourse unless this guy bashes you still only like a 25 percent chance right and he has to be near you so if he's ever not near you, you can you can escape like i don't know why this guy got no oh never mind i do because this guy's got blind so many dumb things here. Um, yeah. So, those farming patterns were pretty bad, and you have to work on that. Because, like I said, you you like when you're creeping, you should be accelerating. Is that like eight to like twenty minute mark or so? When you can like really hard farm, and then after that you can focus more on like split pushing and then taking fights. But you still have to like do everything efficiently and like get as much as you can out of the map. Like even if you're just trying to split push, you push really hard and then farm these two camps. You don't just like push it to here and then run back to base. Like that was like horrible. You lost probably 40 creeps from doing that and on this side you probably lost closer to like... Game over baby. Uh, on this side, I'd say you probably lost 40 creeps like each time because like you farm at least three waves here which is 15 creeps farming out the whole woods twice, oh, I'd say it's probably like destroyed. another 25 creeps. Jeez, man, this, oh crap, they're, they're getting whooped. Under attack. Yeah, so uh, I'd say you probably lost 80 creeps combined Dyer in those two things. Dyer just won! They won, Mori! Quick, 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 yell at me about it! To keep those things in mind, think about your skill builds and your item builds more. Uh, I think your skill build was okay.
Uh, a lot of people do like getting more levels in crit. I think Max and the Hilly Ward's fine. It's really good in team fights if you actually control the ward well. Crit is good for obvious reasons. The one level is usually pretty good if you feel you really want stats. And leveling it more is not wrong. It's just a matter of preference. Um, for this, you got the Morbid Mask, which forced you into the Dom, which you didn't use to stack because you got it so late. Um, when you were going for Battle Fury, so you only need Poor Man Shield and like Ring of Health to like sustain your regen. And plus you have Healing Ward if you ever get super low. And when you have a Battle Fury, you have plenty of regen to use your Healing Ward on cooldown as needed. So the Morbid Mask was a complete waste. A Wand would have helped you more, particularly in this lane where you've gotten free charges every time he does a Totem, every time he uses his Blood Rage. Um, and you got an SMY when there's plenty of valid reasons to get a Manta this game. Manta also lets you split push better, because you can like, you remember I said like, oh, there's this, you could push this, when this chat tower is up, I was like, oh, you can push it, but like the Earthshaker might be there waiting. You can use your Manta illusions to push it and scout it. Like you send one Manta illusion forward and he just runs forward looking around. And then you use the other Manta illusion to fight the creep wave, or you just use Bolt to push the creep wave in the tower. Either one, either one's fine. And then you farm the risky area while you're doing that. Or sorry, you, you farm these areas while you're pushing the riskier area with your illusions. You can also like send one illusion up the wave and send one here to act as vision um, because no one on your team felt like buying Obswords. And like, as a carry, if, particularly if you want to do a lot of split pushing, buy your own fucking wards, who cares? Or you can buy them for your support if he's going to be a moron. Like, observer wards are so important. Like, if you had a ward here, uh, I'll say if you had a ward here and here maybe fuck if you could place three words that'd be great get the word here there and y y i guess you don't need that one so you can say this word and that word this one up here and this one on top of this cliff you'd be able to slip push with like impunity you'd pretty much always know if they were trying to gank you coming from like this way or that way like through there or through there you'd always know and then you could just run away or tp or whatever you want to do but um be okay that about concludes what i want to talk about um there's some good things for you to work on there. Feel free to send in other replays if you want me to look at them. Uh, message me any questions, whatever. Alright, have a good one. Best of luck in your next hands.